pathogenesis or pathogenic significance of paramphistomiasis or amphistomiasis. Paramphistomiasis is caused by different species. Uh, some of them are enlisted here and they are Parambistomum cervi, Crotaliforum, Crotaliforum, Gastrothylax and Fiscodaria species. And pathogenesis is caused by adult parasite as well as immature parasite or ampistomes. For the adult parasite, you know, they are located in uh, four stomach, particularly in rumen and reticulum. They are always non-pathogenic or non-harmful, even if uh, that is even with a large number of parasitic load uh, in the predilection site. Sometimes they may cause localized loss of rumen papillae in case of heavy infection. And in case of uh, Zygantocotyl explanatum, they, they will be found in the bile duct and gallbladder. So they are also considered as non-pathogenic, but sometimes there may be series of superficial hemorrhage due to attachment with the mucosa and the damage may lead to uh, that is occlusion of the bile duct and sometimes there is damage in the liver followed by fibrosis. So before talking about the pathogenesis caused by the immature fluke, I would like to talk about um, uh, talk about some of the things that is related to uh, this pathogenesis. So the first figure here you can see parampistomum feeding on ruminal epithelium and the second one is uh, feeding of mucus of the duodenum. So this sort of feeding is called plug feeder. And the next figure that is figure number three, uh, this is actually uh, after post-mortem of experimentally infected with uh, experimentally infected with uh, one of the parampistomum species in lamb. You can see there is severe hemorrhage and uh, those are visible through the peritoneal surface. And the last figures includes reddening of duodenal mucosa with huge number of ampistome. If you closely look at here, you can see the ampistomes. So the immature flukes or ampistomes, they will be found in the small intestine, that is upper part of the small intestine, and they will attach themselves with the mucosa, and they will also feed on the mucosa. Therefore, they are called the plug feeder. So due to the attachment and the plug feeding effect, there will be, uh, there will be damages of the mucosa leading to inflammation uh, necrosis and sometimes that is there will be um, some damage on the villus that is villus atrophy will be found and eventually there will be slothing of the mucosa and ultimately there will be found hemorrhagic duodenitis and ulceration due to the extensive erosion uh, of the mucosa and due to the plug feeder as well as loss of the mucosa, loss of villi, there will be continuous leakage of hemorrhage uh, into the gut and this will lead to generalized hyperproteinemia. And in case, uh, in case of the generalized hyperproteinemia or generalized edema, there will be accumulation of the fluid in different body cavities and organs. So this will lead to hydropericardium that is accumulation of the fluid in the pericardium and hydrothorax accumulation of the uh, fluid in the thorax and so on that is pulmonary edema and ascites and one of the important clinical signs will be appeared uh, in the can be seen in the animal that is uh, bottle jaw so fluid will be accumulated in uh, different loose surfaces of the body particularly under the jaw and the next one is due to the loss of plasma protein into the guard, there will be decomposition of the blood and plasma protein into the guard, and ultimately this will lead to loose and persistent fetal diarrhea. And next one is due to the extensive damage of the uh, small intestine, there will be impaired 
food absorption or food assimilation and all together that is decomposition of the blood plasma protein into the gut and fatty diarrhea and due to the impaired food assimilation followed by uh, emaciation of the animal all together including the hyperproteinemia all together this will lead to death of the animal within 15 to 20 days post infection and another thing can be happened by the uh, immature flux so the, uh, I have already talked about that they will be found in the small intestine so from the small intestine you know uh, they can move to the bile duct as bile ducts open into the duodenum and they may lead to the cholecystitis and fibrosis and responsible for causing obstructive jaundice. So if anybody asks about the pathogenic significance of parambustomiasis or ampistomiasis, in a single word you can say adults are usually non-pathogenic, immature parasites are uh, highly pathogenic and they may cause hemorrhagic duodenitis and ulceration of the duodenum. And due to the mucosal damage, they are, um, that is the pathogenesis also include generalized hyperproteinemia and there will be accumulation of uh, fluid in different organs and all together uh, the animal may die within 15 to 20 days post infection.